Today we're on uh, chapter 12, Design and Documentation. <coughs> and um, so this is the chapter that comes after strategy. So first we had the research, then we had the strategy, and then we're making a transition into design. <coughs> and the whole point of uh, this is that uh, this chapter is that you're supposed to communicate visually uh, what your design for the website. And it's not easy to visualize um, the design of the website because uh, you might be trying to visualize things like controlled vocabulary. And how do you visualize that? So <coughs> uh, they firstly recommend that you when you're diagramming how the website's going to look, that you use multiple views because there's going to be, um, there's different ways to represent different concepts. And that you also um, make the different views with different audiences in mind. So there may be the, the um, graphic designers, maybe one audience, your, your uh, top executives, maybe another audience. And uh, this may not even <coughs> get to the users, but when you do have user testing, there may be some kind of visualization for user testing as well. <coughs> uh, generally speaking, there's uh, basic concepts that we're concerned about is the content components. And the connections. So the content components are how the uh, content of the website is grouped and sequenced. So this is the um, how the content, you could say, components, or it's like the elements, is grouped. and sequenced. And then the connections are how are the components linked to each other so that you can navigate. I'll just make this a C. So that's like uh, the main um, things that we're concerned about when we're trying to present the design of the website to others. <coughs> um, two of the big tools they talk about in this chapter are blueprints. And wireframes. Um, this is a picture of a, of a blueprint, a high-level blueprint. And sometimes blueprints are also called site maps, but it's not exactly the same as a site map. But it has some of the similar features of a site map, because it may not have all of the web pages, but it's more like the, <coughs> the information of uh, wh where should the information or the content of the website go. How is it going to be grouped? In what types of clusters is it going to be grouped? So it will usually show things like um, <coughs> the different components, which are at the, at the web page level. Like you have a component, which is here, which is a main page. Uh, you might have other components, which are a tour of the organization, purchasing, our educational products. So these are kind of uh, high level components of how you would group information on the site. And then um, <coughs> what is the relationship between these components? Um, the high level blueprint is kind of gives you a holistic or bird's eye view of the site so it doesn't go necessarily down into each of the sites, although you can have different 
levels of blueprints as well. Um, and it uses uh, visual language elements. So the visual language elements describe what the, um, the components of the website. So here we usually have the visual language elements are represented in a legend. In the legend, this says that this arrow means it's a gateway to the site. This is how you get into the site. Uh, this, this line means the relationship between pages or components. And so the component in this uh, blueprint is a, is a page uh, in some sense. Uh, this is um, the clear uh, box is the page components uh, content or application that appears on a page. Um, so this is the search interface. Uh, the browsing by audience, uh, browsing by title, browsing by format, browsing by topic. It says comprehensive searching and browsing in the sub-site records. And uh, a dark one is page itself. So sometimes the page will contain these types of elements in it. And then the page is uh, to be created. I don't see the difference in the color here, so I don't really know which ones those are. Unless it's they're talking about this up here. These are notes about things that are needed. And then the, uh, when there's a dashed line around something, it's grouped of related pages, groups. So this means that these uh, things, these concepts go together. And these are value-added guides, site, sub-site directory, uh, sub-sites. And then grouped. Uh, groups of similar pages. So this is where they don't go into details, but there could be many pages that are about projects, programs, and series. Okay. Um, yeah. What do what is uh, actually a blueprint? Is that a document? Yeah, it's like a visual representation of where information should go on the page. So it's like. This is a blueprint. This is a high-level blueprint. Yes. And this is for um, someone that's planning out how this uh, website should group its information. So um, they represent this as the main page, and then they have like different types of uh, concept areas where information is grouped together. And it's not exactly the pages itself, but it's how the information on the site is going to be grouped together. Um, there's different types of uh, blueprints. And this is uh, from a, a greeting card site. And it says that this is a task-oriented uh, high-level blueprint. And it shows how filtering might work at the greeting card site. So they have, um, uh, it says, at any level, user can view cards, go to lower level, filter on available tones, filter on available formats. And so level one, they have read to send or special collection, reason to send or special collections. Then they might look at formats or tones. Uh, the tone being whether it's a funny card or a serious card. The format being whether it's like a simple card or an animated card or something with music or something like that. <coughs> and then at level two, there's more specific reasons or content. So this might be like there's Mother's Day coming up and they need to send a card. Or this might be, um, uh, it's Mother's Day, but I'm sending a card to my grandmother. And then the, the recipient, level three is recipient or content category. And uh, this might be um, also like who, who you're sending it to. So there can just be more specific uh, information. And this is how they I envision like what the customer is going to go through in terms of a task-oriented um, blueprint. So it's a, it's a customer process. 
and it doesn't mean that their web page is going to look like this. They don't have like three different web pages, but that they're just considering the the task. And then this is also a task-oriented uh, blueprint. So the use this is a user-centered view of the card sending process uh, at a greeting card site. And so then they also have the home page, and then they have thumbnail pages and view card details. So this is more based on on the idea of using the component of the blueprint as a page, and then there's also processes that are involved. So you have the home page, and then the it says the important but outside the scope. Um, so that's um, and then key components to send of send process. So this is instead of saying that this is a web page, it's more like it's the process. Okay. Um, <coughs> one of the things with these types of uh, uh, blueprints is that <coughs> the container is, a pa is equal to a page. So you have um, a container, like you can think of an envelope or a folder. A folder is a container. And that equals a, a page, pages. And that the content can be equal to like chunks of information. Um, so you might be using some pages many times in different chunks of information. So you might have a container that represents, in that case, some process. And that um, so di different inf information might be used with one process. And then some of that information might be used with another process. So you, you can think about the, the chunks of information that you have can fit <coughs> into many different types of pages. So you might have somebody like um, um, let's see. Uh, they have later on an example of of a, a music site, and they have artist, and they have um, um, album, and they have. Oh, that's probably not a good thing. Let's see. Um, genre. So you might have an uh, artist of uh, Joe Black. I don't know. I, I really don't know. And maybe it's a country genre. But maybe he's also maybe he's also an artist under pop music. And so you can take if you were searching on information about associated with Joe Black, it can go into two different types of containers. Uh, which might contain information about punk country music and might contain information about pop music. So you can put uh, the information in two different containers. So this is like an abstract way of looking at the organization of information on the web page. So you could put uh, your, your, you can group your information by a user process sometimes. Um, it just before I go to this one. There's also some other pictures of blueprints that include, like the one on page 299, which shows <coughs> a public uh, consulting firm. And they group things by a country, or they select a firm. And then they also group things by service. Um, so it's one example. Mm. 
And then there was one on page 300. And this is a <coughs> the web, the Weather Channel site. And they group things by uh, geographic hub navigation. <coughs> so on that one, the entry point is the national US site. And then they have different, um, different groupings of information by world, region, and by local. And then there's different data that can be associated with um, multiple re regions. It could be associated with the local data, or it could also be associated with uh, regional data. So <coughs> it's a different kind of um, um, abstract visual visualization. And it says on page 303 that you can have uh, more detailed uh, blueprints. And um, so the, uh, the more, an example of a more detailed blueprint is on page 305, where they show the section of the SIGGRAPH conference website. And they show that they have different, they have like a numbered uh, level to, for each paper there's, there's a, a grouping of information. <coughs> but uh, a lot of times people just use the top level uh, blueprint uh, just to get an overall <coughs> illustration of the connection between content and, and the association between content. And then they use wireframes uh, to get um, to get a better idea of how the page is actually going to look. So this doesn't really tell us how the page is going to look. It just tells us how we're grouping information. Okay. <coughs> so when we have this um, idea of uh, blueprints is So then we, we will use like um, we will use wireframes to explain how the page should look and sometimes the feel of the page as well. Okay. So let me just remove some of this stuff. Um, so this was an image of a wireframe, and it's a very high-definition, um, high-fi wireframe of uh, weather.com. And this was also pointed out in Chapter 11 on strategy, because sometimes the wireframe is used in the st strategy discussions as well. Um, uh, wireframes are usually not made for every single page of the website. It's only made for the most important pages on the website. And the reason is that you, when you do something like this, you're kind of making a, a template. And you would like this template to be repeated throughout the website. Not maybe you should maybe you have several templates for different types of pages that do different things. But that if you have a page that's like an information giving page, you might want it to look basically the same, have the same kind of format, the same type of um, structure to it. Uh, usually you want to you move from uh, when you're doing the blueprint from a high-level design 
to more detailed design and the more detailed design about how it's going to look comes in play when you do the wireframes. Um, uh, the things that you should be going for are that um, this, the wireframe should show you how the page should appear, how to group components. Uh, you can go from very simple to high fi or high fidelity uh, wireframes. And that the guide that you should do for de designing the wireframe is that you should go for uh, consistency. Let me just go to the page. This is on page 313. So consistency, uh, these are part of the best practices. Consistency is um, like if you have um, um, uh, the way, the basic way that it appears should be the same throughout the site. So you use it as like a template. Uh, it says also that <coughs> you should be able to reuse uh, this with other types of tools. And they give Visio as an example of a tool where you can make some of these wireframes and reuse them for different web pages. And uh, callouts are the um, <coughs> the notes about how the, the page is going to function. So you can uh, also uh, include descriptive materials, like a notes page with a wireframe page that explains how the different parts are going to function. And then you have um, uh, follow procedures when working in a team. Uh, this means that you will be able to establish procedures for sharing and maintaining the common templates of the page so that when the site maybe expands and has additional pages, uh, you have procedures in place about how you develop the pages. Uh, besides this, there's this page here, which is in chapter 11, also is the same uh, wireframe that appears on page 312. And an example of a low fidelity wireframe is on page uh, 310. And on page 311 is a medium. So if you look on page uh, 310, for example, you can see that there's no pictures there. There's just a place for a logo. I don't have the picture on here, but it's on page 310. And there's also, um, there's places for information, but there's not actually the content. And <coughs> I'll show you a link to a website that has different templates that are low fidelity uh, wireframes that you can use to fill in in more detail. So it just kind of gives you uh, the basic look of the page. And then on um, on page uh, 311, uh, there's a medium uh, level, uh, medium fidelity wireframe. And so there's more details and more explanation and more unique content. But it doesn't get maybe as, doesn't have all of the images in place or it doesn't get as, as detailed. Okay, and then on page 312, there's this one, which is repeated again. The difference between this one and the one on chapter 11 is they're not explaining what the content means here. It's just where the, where the content is located. So on um, figure 1211, I guess finally that's yeah, 
that it's just going back to the example of the wireframe for the greeting card sites. And this would be, I think, like a medium level uh, wireframe because it has places for the logos and the banner, but it doesn't have, it doesn't have a lot of um, specific content in it yet. But perhaps it, it's a bit more because it has some of the levels, so it's a bit more than a low mm. fidelity wireframe. And then you have um, <coughs> on on um, figure twelve twelve, which is on page three hundred nine. You have wireframes can represent any type of content, so it doesn't all have to look like the top page. You can have different wireframes for different pages, and this is one that uh, just is like um, when we showed the the figure before with the blueprint where they had the tone and the, <coughs> and the uh, form formats. These are two types of wireframes that go <coughs> with that other blueprint. So that goes with the, this blueprint here, the one on figure 12.4. And then there was a wireframe for that one that went with that uh, blueprint. And this is uh, another example of a medium fidelity wireframe uh, that has uh, some extra content but that the more specific content in the, in the images will come later on. Okay. Okay. Um, even though this uh, chapter only has one slide left, there's a lot of information on this slide that I need to go through, and there's a lot of pages in the chapter that relate to the slide. So. Um, I think what I want to do is uh, we take our break early now and we come back at five after and then uh, we'll go through this like uh, slide step by step because we need to talk about content mapping, the content mapping process, content models and different concepts like style guides. So we'll, we'll just take a break here, okay? And we'll go through an example of this.